oil prices marked a fourth straight week of losses, dropping more than 20 percent from the September highs. Our next guest, though, says that right now is the time to go long oil. Don Stroyven is head of oil research at Goldman Sachs. And, and, and Don, you think prices will rise from here. Why? So we think that oil prices will uh, will stay and actually rise to the higher end of the $80 to $100 per barrel uh, OPEC range because of three reasons. Uh, demand has been strong this year and will remain solid next year. Second, we think OPEC will be responsive and keep supply lower for longer and, if necessary, uh, cut more. And third, we think that supply growth outside of OPEC, which has surprised significantly to the upside this year, uh, will slow uh, into next year. Why do you think supply growth elsewhere is going to slow? Because um, U.S. producers have, have been able to produce a lot more than had been anticipated. Yes, so if you look at where the supply beats this year have been coming from, really two groups. Um, production in both the U.S. and Brazil because of faster execution, easing in post-pandemic supply constraints. Um, and we, we think these are mostly one-offs. And then second, we have seen very significant increases in what I would call the vulnerable OPEC producing countries, uh, places such as uh, Iran, uh, Nigeria, and, uh, and Venezuela. And if we, for instance, think about Iran, we think we're getting closer to production capacity. So we think that most of the gains of this year outside of OPEC uh, supply were, were one -off, largely one off. It's really weird, though, to be talking about a war in the Middle East right now, a second war in Ukraine with Russia, you know, major oil producing areas, and to see oil at $77 a barrel. What, what happens? How do you explain that? Yes. So uh, the most important reason was that back in late September, when we hit almost $100 per barrel, the market was pricing uh, very large inventory draws in the fall. But it hasn't happened. If you look at global inventory levels, they're pretty much flat so because of stronger than supply. Weakness in China has been the big drawdown. I think that some renewed concerns about demand have played a role, triggered by somewhat softer U.S. macroeconomic data like the jobless claims, um, some concerns about China. But big picture, uh, demand has been strong this year. The IEA and OPEC have revised their estimates of demand for this year up again over the last two weeks. We're not even yet in the Thanksgiving weekend, and we're already at record highs for U.S. airport uh, activity levels. So I think demand has been stronger than widely perceived. The big surprise of 2023 is stronger than expected non-OPEC supply growth, which we think will, uh, will slow uh, moving into 2024. Russia's not having any problem selling oil, is it? It, it, it? In some perverse way, are they getting premium prices for, for even with the sanctions? So if you, uh, if you look at Russia uh, supply, it has been basically moving sideways over the last uh, six months. But I think the goal of the price cap that Western policymakers designed was twofold. On the one hand, keeping Russian barrels on the market, and that goal uh, is being met. And on the other hand, reducing uh, Russian, Russian revenues from, from oil. Uh, and there, um, you know, I think that you know, what's happening is that, that Russia has basically set up a, uh, a dark fleet. Roughly 70% of Russian oil is now being uh, shipped through a supply chain that is non non-Western. That costs some money to the Russians to set up that supply chain, so that lowers Russian revenue somewhat. But the, the main goal was to keep Russian barrels on the market. That has happened and has contributed to uh, you know, the supply upside surprises this year right. and, and the sell-off. Our price cap didn't really work that well. Right? And China has no problem with Russian oil, Russian oil, right? If you look at the big buyers of Russian oil, it's really indeed in Asia, India, number one, China, number two. Turkey is also buying some barrels. So this whole supply chain uh, has been rerouted over the last one year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of upside risks, the reasons that the price would go even higher than you're thinking, and I think for Brent, you're calling for $92 a barrel? Yes. What you're expecting? Okay. That's so right. For, for prices to get pushed even higher, it would take, what, a colder winter? Uh, other issues? Uh, supply, maybe supply crunches somewhere? Yes, yeah, so I think the main upside risk to prices continues to be supply disruptions. We already have a fairly uh, constructive demand forecast, so I think upside to prices is more likely to come from the supply side. I think one of the remarkable features this year is that uh, the level of supply disruptions has been remarkably low, despite the fact that we are living in a highly uncertain geopolitical backdrop. Yeah. Hey, Don,